Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, uh, we are uh, today we are going to have uh, a supplement of lecture number five, and this is going to be the last topic that we are going to cover under quantization. Uh, the basic uh, topic that we are going to cover today is uh, the PCM word size, which in principle is that uh, once I've got uh, uh, the sample at the end, and I'm going to encode uh, that sample into bits as the last process of uh, analog to digital conversion how many bits should be assigned to each sample that is quantized so the fundamental question is uh, what should be the criteria that based on which i should decide how many bits we are going to use in this situation so the answer to this question is basically it depends on how much quantization distortion can we tolerate so starting off with uh, uh, this thing uh, let uh, E be the quantization distortion uh, here uh, and this quantization distortion is specified as the fraction of uh, peak to peak voltage. Now uh, the point is that we can specify this uh, absolute error or absolute quantization noise uh, in terms of some hard value but we are not going to do that because uh, in general when we are going to uh, design the quantizers quantizers are basically different so in in order to have the flexibility in designing the quantizer we are going to define this quantization error as the fraction of peak to peak voltage and that peak to peak voltage is basically the active region of uh, that uh, our quantizer or in principle we can say that whatever the incoming signal is we are going to have uh, the error uh, with respect to that incoming signal. So uh, we want to have E that is less than or equal to a certain fraction of V peak to peak. So in principle definitely we are going to define certain limit and that limit is going to uh, be in terms of V peak to peak. Uh, so uh, let's say I want to have quantizer error which is given here as E in the absolute terms uh, I want this value to be less than or equal to some value which is defined as fraction P of V peak to peak voltage so uh, I want to have the quantizer uh, noise or distortion less than this thing so uh, let's go about it uh, how we are going to uh, see how this relation is going to tell me the number of bits that I should assign to each sample. So uh, for uniform quantizer we know that the quantization error cannot be more than Q by 2 across the complete quantization range. So it means I can say that the maximum amount of quantization error that I am going to get will be equal to Q by 2. It means that maximum error cannot exceed this value. So in principle, in the worst case scenario, when I'm having the maximum amount of error, I will not exceed this value that is Q by 2. So now if I convert this Q by 2 in terms of V peak to peak, so I can write it, this 2 is going to be here from this, from this equation. So I can define the quantile interval that is Q in terms of V peak to peak and number of quantization levels. So Generally, when we do this thing, we approximate it with V peak to peak divided by number of quantization levels. So it means if I want to have the calculation, when I divide the whole range that is V peak to peak divided by number of quantization levels, that will give me basically the value of quantile interval that we have been doing in the class previously. So it means if I define the quantile interval Q in terms of V peak to peak and number of quantization levels, so I will end up with V peak to peak divided by L. And this 2 here is basically coming from this uh, Q by 2 thing. So I have this 2 that is in the denominator from this Q by 2. So in principle, uh, I can safely argue that the maximum amount of error that I am going to get uh, will be approximately equal to V peak to peak divided by 2L. So let's call this equation B. Now, as we have decided earlier that we need to remain lower than V peak to peak, P into V peak to peak, which is predefined value. Uh, so E maximum uh, can be rewritten as E maximum should always be less than equal to 
P into V peak to peak. So now important thing here is that uh, the maximum error that I can get is Emax. So in principle, if I limit this maximum error, this one, this E maximum below certain threshold value that is defined by P into V peak to peak that it will be okay for me. So it means I need to limit my maximum error with this uh, less than or equal to P into V peak to peak. So if I put in the value of E maximum from equation B and put it into equation C here, so I'm going to get V peak to peak divided by 2L in place of E max. And then I have the rest of equation is written as it is. So I am having V peak to peak divided by 2L less than or equal to P into V peak to peak. Now as V peak to peak are appear is appearing on the both sides, so I can cancel it. And uh, just by doing some rearranging, uh, I, I'm, I'm taking this number of quantization level to this side and I'm bringing this P into the denominator. So definitely when I'm going to bring P into the denominator and take, going to take this uh, number of quantization level into uh, this numerator thing, so definitely inequalities will be reversed. So now I can rewrite this thing as number of quantization level should be greater than or equal to 1 over 2 P where P is already defined as a fraction. So uh, if I look into this thing, uh, number of quantization levels should always be the power of 2. We have discussed this previously in the class. So I can rewrite the number of quantization levels as 2 raised to the power L. So if 2 raised to the power small l, if I put this value here in this equation, I'm going to get 2 raised to the power small l should be greater than or equal to 1 over 2p. And if I take log on both sides and simplify this expression, I'm going to have the number of bits where small l is basically number of bits per PCM word. So number of bits per PCM sh word should always be greater than or equal to log to the base 2 of 1 over 2p. So it means uh, if I summarize this thing, when we are going to assign certain number of bits to every quantized sample in the end, that is basically the process of encoding, we need to decide it on the basis of number of quantization levels and which in turn is basically dependent upon the allowed error which is basically defined as a fraction of peak to peak voltage which is P week to peak. So it means uh, once we are once we have decided this number of quantization level, we can, we can easily find out the number of bits per PCM word that we are going to use greater than or equal to 1 over 2 P where P is already defined as a fraction. So uh, if I look into this thing, uh, number of quantization levels should always be the power of 2. We have discussed this previously in the class. So I can rewrite the number of quantization levels as 2 raised to the power L. So if 2 raised to the power small l, if I put this value here in this equation, I'm going to get 2 raised to the power small l should be greater than or equal to 1 over 2p. And if I take log on both sides and simplify this expression, I'm going to have the number of bits where small l is basically number of bits per PCM word. So number of bits per PCM sh word should always be greater than or equal to log to the base 2 of 1 over 2p. So it means uh, if I summarize this thing, when we are going to assign certain number of bits to every quantized sample in the end, that is basically the process of encoding, we need to decide it on the basis of number of quantization levels and which in turn is basically dependent upon the allowed error, which is basically defined as a fraction of peak to peak voltage, which is P week to peak. So it means uh, once we are once we have decided this number of quantization level, we can, we can easily find out the number of bits per PCM word that we are going to use here. So just as a reference, I would like uh, to tell you that this is basically from uh, Bernard Clark and it is basically the page number. Let me check what is the page number. Uh, let me check. This is Bernard Klar and let me check where is this thing.
so it is basically page number uh, page number 91 and in the book the page number 91 of the book but page number uh, 113 of this uh, whole file it is section 2.8.4.1 that i have just explained to you so this is uh, something that we have to uh, do in this situation so i hope that this helps in uh, deciding how many bits are we going to assign to each sample but one word of caution here uh, sometimes this p is mentioned as a percentage so you need to be very careful about that so if i say that a uh, p is one percent of p peak to peak like here p is one percent of peak to peak here i first need to convert that percentage into a linear scale and then multiply it with peak v peak to peak so it means if p is defined as one percent i need to divide one by hundred which means one over hundred and then multiply this one over hundred with v peak to peak so this is a very common mistake that students generally uh, make that uh, sometimes p is mentioned as a percentage and they do not convert that percentage into a linear scale so if if you are going to make an error in in that regard definitely it is a problem because one percent and 0.001 percent they are two different things or 0.01 percent are different things so definitely you need to take care that this p this p should always be converted to linear scale when you are going to do actual calculation because sometimes in questions p is going to be defined as the percentage of uh, v peak to peak so percentage is not uh, to be used when doing the calculations so uh, you need to uh, go for uh, converting the speed to the linear scale